potential instrumentation. So for those of you studying for your exams and you want to study with me, you want to study with somebody, let's go over some mock exam practice and critical thinking case studies type of questions. So I'm going to go through these multiple choice questions with you and then think about the answer. And then shortly after that, I'm going to explain the answer, but I'm also going to explain why the other answers aren't the best answer because on the exam there's always going to be more than one good answer but you need to know what the best answer is the better answer because only one answer can be correct so that's what we're going to go over and i'm going to discuss with you the rationales as well so this is the best form of studying where all of these question parts are going to come together and then you'll feel confident for your dental instrumentation exam, whether you're in school taking the board exam or you just want a review on instrumentation. So let's go through it together, shall we? So, and this says case studies week 11, by the way, because this is part of my board exam prep academy course, in case you're wondering where the week 11 comes from. So let's go through a couple of these questions together, okay? So during a routine exam, a patient reports discomfort when flossing near tooth 3-1 or 31. So depending on whether you're in Canada or the U.S., it doesn't matter. These tooth numbers might be different to you, but if the tooth numbers really matter, then I'll, then I'll give you guys the different notations for the tooth numbers. But for right now, don't worry about it. You don't need the tooth number to answer the question, okay? So the dentist suspects a fractured restoration. Which instrument is most appropriate for detecting rough margins or fractures on the restoration? So even just not knowing the tooth number, I could have taken the tooth number out. All the question is asking you is which instrument is most appropriate for detecting rough margins or fractures during a restoration? So not an obvious one where there's no filling on the tooth, but we're talking about the dentist or the dental hygienist or the dental assistant is checking around a tooth that has a filling and you're trying to detect rough margins or fractures which instrument is best. So feel free to pause the video if you need to think about it a little bit, because I'm going to go right into the answers for you. So, whoops, sorry guys. So the answer is I need to take this slide out because that's clearly a double slide. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Okay. So the answer is explore. So in my opinion, this is kind of an easier answer for sure. Um, and that's why you won't see specific rationales and answers to every answer. Cause I'm just going to tell you what they are now, but you'll notice as we go through, there will be full rationale slides for you to, to um, study from. So basically explore is the only answer here because a, the sickle scalar, you wouldn't use that because a sickle scalar is used to take away plus and calculus from anterior teeth. So yes, you could use that if that's the only thing you had because it has a pointed tip. So you could kind of maneuver around a restoration, but only if it was an anterior one and an explorer is just the best choice because where there's different types of explorers, this isn't specific on what type of explorer you have, but this is just the best answer here because an explorer detects things. Now, a periodontal probe is only used to check pockets of the teeth. So again, if this was the only tool you had for whatever reason, you dropped your instrument tray and all the other instruments fell and they're dirty now, except for your periodontal probe, you could easily pick up a probe and detect rough margins or fractures. But in a posterior tooth, like you would have to angle it a certain way. And an explorer, again, is just better because it's a lot thinner. It's a thinner point and it's used to detect and a spoon excavator. Does everybody remember what that's used for? It is used on a restorative tray to scoop away a cavity. Um, it's a little spoon. It could scoop away many things, but a cavity is the main thing. It could be used to place um, calcium hydroxide if you're in a pinch and you didn't have the calcium hydroxide applicator. Um, Dical, it could be used, you know, so all of these you could use to detect, but it's not the best answer. Okay. Comment if you have any questions. Next one here. A 45 year old patient presents for a routine dental cleaning. During the assessment, you note subgingival calculus on the distal root of tooth 30 or 30. Well, I guess there is no 30. So that would be 30 um, in a seven millimeter pocket. The patient has generalized gingival inflammation, but good oral hygiene compliance. So the question is, which instrument would you select first to debride 
of the distal root and why. So again, read the question. Anytime you're going over mock exam practice or case studies questions like this, multiple choice, feel free to read the question again because notice how there's many different parts to this question, but also look at the question question is, what are they actually asking? All they're asking is which one would you use to debride the distal root? You don't necessarily need to know about the pockets. You don't need to know about anything else because a distal root suggests it's underneath the gum line. Unless they have gingival recession, then the root would obviously be above the gum line. But the distal is the keyword here. So the universal curette the Gracie 1314 curette, the sickle scalar, or the ultrasonic scalar, think of all of those things. When would you use a, a curette and why? When would you use a scalar and why? A sickle scalar specifically, and then an ultrasonic scalar specifically. That will help you answer this question. So take a moment if you need a moment, and then we will go over the answer. So feel free to pause the video if you need some extra time. So the answer is a Gracie 1314. Okay. So now is when I start to bring in the rationales. So this is the correct answer because it's specifically designed for subgingival scaling of the distal surfaces of posterior teeth. Now tooth 30 is a posterior tooth. Okay. So I guess, yes, that would be helpful to know. Um, if you're in Canada, we typically go by a different notation system, but you can easily look that up online. Or if you are a board exam prep member of mine, you have that full chart inside the course where you can kind of go through the different numbering systems. But basically the Gracie 1314 is specific to the distal surfaces of posterior teeth because it's curved. It has a unique shank. Um, so it's ideal to access the distal roots. And then a seven millimeter pocket is a very deep pocket. In my opinion, in this question, it doesn't really matter about what the pocket depth is because the answer would have been the same nonetheless. Okay. So, and I'll explain why. So let's go over right now the universal curette. So yes, a curette is used for subgingival debridement. Its specific design is more, it doesn't have as many curves to it, okay? So it doesn't offer that specific angulation to get to the distal root of deep pockets. A universal curette, I guess, could get to a distal root, but not as well as a Gracie 1314 because it's more specific. So A would be correct, but B is the most correct because it's better than a universal curette. Now a sickle scalar, it's a scalar, so it's designed for super gingival scaling. It's not appropriate for underneath the gum line. Um, and then an ultrasonic scalar is for general scaling. So not that this is bad, but again, a Gracie 1314 is just better. An ultrasonic scalar, depending on the tip, is meant for above the, the gum line, below the gum line, posterior, anteriors. You just pick the tip that is going to work best for the area that you're going to work on. But in this question, it doesn't give you a specific tip that you'll be using. It just says ultrasonic scalar. So you know that couldn't be the right answer because it's not specific, is um, not specific enough. So the Gracie 13. Um, 1314 curette is the most specific, and that's why that's the best answer because it deals with subgingival scaling and also deep pockets and distal roots. So all of the above, that's, that's what we wanted, and that's the best answer. Okay, are you guys ready to go over another one? Let's do one more here. So a patient presents with orthodontic brackets on all maxillary and mandibular teeth um, presents with plaque accumulation and moderate calculus. You observe inflammation and bleeding on probing around the lower anterior brackets. The question is, which sequence of instruments would you use for this cleaning? Starting with the most efficient choice. So this is a great question because when you're cleaning the teeth, you're not just using one instrument or one type, it's multiple. And it says here, you're cleaning the teeth on the maxillary and the mandibular. There's bleeding involved, there's a lot happening. So think about it. Feel free to pause the video if you need some time to think about it, but I'm gonna go right into the answer for you. So the best answer is an ultrasonic scalar with an orthodontic tip followed by a Gracie curette. So let's explain this one a little bit here. So this is the best answer because an orthodontic tip 
I always suggest an orthodontic or sorry, an ultrasonic scaler when it comes to orthodontics because it has the water pressure with it. Um, hand scaling is so difficult because those brackets are in the way. You can still do it. But first, I like to take out the ultrasonic scaler because it has that water pressure to help to get in between the brackets, the arch wire, the gums, you know, the whole works, right? And it's, it's made to clean around brackets, especially if you have the ultrasonics um, tip. But I'm a mobile dental hygienist and I don't have 20 different tips for 20 different things. So I have a few different tips and I don't have an orthodontic tip, but that doesn't mean I can't use the ultrasonic scaler when I'm seeing somebody with ortho. And a Gracie curette can remove the residual deposits and polish specific areas. So that means whatever the ultrasonic scaler kind of missed or couldn't quite get, then you take out the Gracie curette because it's very specific for those harder to reach areas. Okay, so let's go over the other ones to say why it's not the best answer. Um, so an ultrasonic scaler followed by a Gracie curette again is good. And that's what I kind of said I would do because I don't necessarily have an ultrasonic, oh my goodness, an orthodontic tip I don't necessarily have when I see my, my um, mobile dental hygiene clients. But I can use any ultrasonic scalar tip, but then I would make sure to follow through with a Gracie curette to make sure to get right in there. So that's not wrong, but it's not the best answer, right? And then again, a sickle scaler followed by a universal curette isn't the best because honestly, if you have the ability to use an ultrasonic scaler, especially when there's bleeding, which I forgot to mention so far, but especially if there's bleeding and heavy plaque accumulation, the ultrasonic scaler is better because it helps to actually clean out better with that water pressure all that plaque and all of the bleeding. It helps to get underneath the gum line to help to heal the gums because of that bleeding. Anytime I see that the gums are, ble are bleeding, even if they have light plaque, which could happen, if the gums are bleeding, I automatically take out my ultrasonic scaler because I want to really clean in there really, really well with that water pressure. So B would not be correct because the ultrasonic scaler is just better. And D is not correct because it's saying to pick up a hand instrument first and then the ultrasonic scaler, but that is shown to not be as effective. When you're using an ultrasonic scaler, you want to use that first and then the hand scalers after that. It's always best to not only use an ultrasonic scaler and that's your only scaler. They don't want you to do that because it's easy to miss those little fine tune areas always pick up your hand scalers afterwards. It's kind of like if you're cleaning the teeth with one or two instruments, but then you don't check afterwards with the Explorer, you're not doing the best you could. You should always check with an Explorer afterwards. Or it's like examining the mouth and you're not using an Explorer along with your mouth mirror. You know, you're missing it. Okay, you could do it, but you're probably missing some key areas there. So how did everybody do with those questions? So we go over a lot of our case studies practice, mock exam practice, and our board exam prep academy. So if you're looking to prep for the board exam, definitely check out Dental L's board exam prep academy. We go through these every single week live online with me like this to gather on every single topic. This says case studies week 11 because this just happens to be instrumentation, but we've talked about dental materials. We've talked about pharmacology. We've talked about all kinds of things. So definitely check out dentalL.com if this is something you might be interested in. I've been tutoring students since 2005. So that's 21 years now. Time sure goes by fast. I know I can help you pass your exams. And if you're still in, in school, I can still help you throughout your school with tutoring you, helping to prep you for your classes, assignments, exams. I help everybody, all the dental hygiene students, all the dental assisting students and whatever help you need and also dental professionals. So click like if you like this video and I'm happy to offer up more mock exam practice study with me type of videos like this one because I have fun doing them. I just wish we could talk to each other at the same time so I could see what everybody's answers are. I'm curious. And did you have any questions about any of those answers where you need further clarification on? That's why in the Board Exam Prep Academy, it's, it is so nice. Because if, if anybody has questions, I'm there live to help explain it and then offer further clarification to you. So let me know if you need anything. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.